Let's continue on with example three, which is where we left off. So we've got two more that we're going to be taking a look at. We've actually got some ions here. We have the triiodide ion, which is I3 negative. And then we have FB, SBCL5 2 negative. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with doing Lewis dots. These Lewis dots might be a little bit harder for some, so I'm actually going to work these out real quickly. So the three iodines are actually just going to be three iodines in a row, just like ozone was. All right, if we take a look at how many electrons we have, iodine has seven, but there are three of them, so that's 21. Plus we have that negative charge, so I add in an extra electron for 22. Two single bonds takes care of four electrons, so I'm down to 18. Take those 18 and go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. So of the 18, I use 12, which means I have 6 left over. Now what do I do with those 6? Remember, the rules are whatever you have left over, stick them on the central. So I'm going to do it in pairs. There's 2, there's 4, and there are 6 right there. Now technically speaking, I should put brackets around this because it's an, um, it's an ion. But the, the question is not asking me. To draw the Lewis dot structure. Now, granted, I have to draw the Lewis structure to answer the question, but it's not asking me to, that's not part of the problem uh, answer. It's asking me to determine the geometries of the compound. So it, I can leave the brackets off. It's fine. So now that I have a Lewis dot, I figure out how many electron domains there are. There are three lone pairs and there are two bonds. So five electron domains. So the electron domain geometry is going to be trigonal bipyramidal. Trigonal by pyramidal. All right, now for the molecular geometry, I have to ask myself, okay, there are three lone pairs and there are two bonds. So if I take a look at a chart, that's going to actually give me a linear molecular geometry. So let me actually draw out to the side here why that is. So if you think about, okay, here's our central atom A. And so remember, trigonal by pyramidal is you have those that linear shape uh, up and down, and then you've got that trigonal planar shape in the equatorial position, right? So you got something like that. So that's my trigonal pyramid shape. Now you've got three lone pairs, right? So those three lone pairs are actually going to take the equatorial spot. So they're going to take this spot here, this spot here, and this spot here. So remember with molecular geometry, we ignore those lone pairs. So what are we left with? We're left with a linear shape, right? And so what would be the bond angle for this? If you were to take a look at a chart and say, oh, well, trigonal planar is 90 degrees and 120 degrees. Well, normally, yes, when there's an atom here in the equatorial position. But since there's nothing in the equatorial position and all you have left is just the axial position, the up and down, really the bond angle here is actually just 180 degrees, right? Because it's 180 degrees from one atom to the next. So this actually was an exception um, because of just what was there bonded and how many lone pairs there were. So now let's take a look at the second one. So we have antimony, which is going to be in the middle, and we have five chlorines. Do, 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 do. Okay, just like that. And so let's see what we got going on. Antimony has five electrons, uh, valence electrons. Chlorine has seven, but there are five of them, so it's 35. And then we have a negative two charge, which means I need to add in two electrons there. And so we end up having 42 valence electrons to work with. Let's get those single bonds going on there. So there's 10 electrons that I just used, so we're down to 32. So we got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, and 30. So I have two electrons left over. So we put them on the central atom. There they are, right there. All right, you see how important it is to draw the Lewis dot structure. If you had not drawn the Lewis dot structure, how would you have known that there was a lone pair on the central atom? You wouldn't have. You wouldn't have known that. And so you might have, you would have made the incorrect assumption, oh, there's five chlorines, so it must be five electron domains, trigonal by pyramidal. And you can see you get yourself into some trouble there. So by drawing the Lewis dot structure, I can see that there's actually six electron domains. Five of them are bonds, and then one is a lone pair. So that is going to give me the octahedral, the octahedral electron domain geometry. But 
if you think about um, of those six electron domains, one of them is a lone pair. If you take a look at your chart, your, your, your little cheat sheet, and what I'm going to do is just so you can see where we're getting this, I'm going to draw the general structure of octahedral. Okay, so there's our general structure of octahedral. There's our six electron domains, but of the six, one of them is a lone pair. And I'm specifically going to get rid of the one on the bottom for a reason, because I want you to see it. So what are you left with? You're left with this square base between these four, but then they're all, they all have this atom at the top, which creates this pyramid. So it's got a square base, but it makes a pyramid. That is why we call it square pyramid. Like I said, we're not being too uh, creative with our names here when, when it comes to the molecular geometries, right? It comes, it, it's intuitive basically on what's there. Um, and then finally, bond angles. What is the bond angle? Well, octahedral is 90 degrees with everything, right? But there's this lone pair, okay? This And this lone pair is actually would be down here, okay, in our, in our drawing. So that lone pair is going to push everything closer together. So it's going to be less than 90 degrees. All right. We got uh, one last uh, content that we need to talk about in this video, and that is dealing with molecules that have multiple central atoms. So in all reality, most molecules that exist in the world of chemistry actually do not have just one central atom. They have many central atoms. But the cool thing is everything we've been learning still applies. You would just apply it to every central atom. So if you're looking at a molecule that has more than one central atom, you're going to determine the shape at each central atom and then collectively you can understand what the shape of the molecule will be. So let me give you an example. So I have the Lewis dot structure given for a more complex or larger molecule, right? This is um, a more, um, you've got some more central atoms. So specifically, you've got a central atom here, you've got a central atom here, and then you've got a central atom here. So everything else is terminal, but you have three central atoms. So to figure out the shape, we still are gonna ask ourselves the same questions, right? So looking at the first one, Carbon, okay, how many electron domains are there? There's one, two, three, and four. Of those four electron domains, how many of them are lone pairs? Zero. So what would be the shape around this carbon? Tetrahedral. And you can see over here, that's actually the shape that ends up getting created. Okay, let's take a look at the second carbon. So the second carbon, how many electron domains are there? There's one, two, and three. Okay, so how many... Uh, of those three electron domains, how many of them are lone pairs? Zero. They're all bonded to an atom, right? So three electron domains, zero are lone pairs. What shape would that be? That'd be trigonal planar. And as you can see over here, that is the shape that we end up getting. Finally, around the oxygen, okay, let me get some space here, clean it up a little bit. So if I'm taking a look at this oxygen, how many electron domains? There's one, two, three, and four. Of those four electron domains, two of them are lone pairs. So if I take a look at my sheet and say, okay, four electron domains, two are lone pairs, two are bonds, what shape is that? That's a bent shape. And as you can see, that's the bent shape that you see right there. So you are able to answer those questions based on just each individual central atom. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. So because of what we learned about Lewis dot structures from topic six, we can quickly predict the shapes around central atoms in larger molecules. So let's say I gave you this condensed formula, right? And I wanted you to figure out very quickly what are the shapes. So remember, a condensed formula is nice because it gives us that general structure. So CH3, so say, okay, we got a C, okay, CH3, there it is. What comes next? It's bonded to an O, okay. And then what comes after the O? Another CH3. So I get that all drawn out. Now, real quickly, check to make sure all your octets are satisfied. All my hydrogens, whoop, all my hydrogens are good. Okay. All my carbons are good because they have the four, um, or the, the eight electrons around it. But take a look at your oxygen, okay? Is oxygen uh, octet satisfied? No, because you only have four electrons around this oxygen. So what do you think is there in addition that we haven't shown yet? Probably some lone pairs, right? 
So that is the Lewis dot structure. So I could, I was able to figure out that there's these lone pairs there because I know oxygen's octet has to be satisfied, right? I know it has to have eight. And there's no way I would have, I couldn't have done a double bond for any weird reason because then that would have put carbon as more than eight valence electrons and carbon can't have an expanded octet. So do you see how I can draw Lewis dots very quickly as long as you know general patterns? So with that being said, we now can figure out what the shape is, you know, of these particular regions. And so let's take a look first of all at this carbon right here. What would be the molecular geometry or shape around that carbon? It'd be tetrahedral. So that carbon would be tetrahedral. Also, same thing for the other carbon. It would also be tetrahedral because it has four electron domains, all of which are bonded to atoms. What about the oxygen? What's the molecular geometry around the oxygen? Well, it has four electron domains, but two of them are lone pairs. So the molecular geometry around this oxygen would actually be bent. And so in all reality, in all reality, we should draw this molecule like this. So there's your bent shape. And then you have your CH3s going down at a bent angle. Now, in all reality, there's also, you know, I should be drawing, you know, one of these as wedges, one of them as dashes, you know, things like that, because technically speaking, you know, it would have that. But the idea is you can quickly look at, you know, the central atom or whatever and say, oh, that's a bent shape. So it makes sense that the molecule actually looks like that if we were to retweak it. That'll come into play when we start talking about things like polarity, which is coming up next. So we'll see you in that section.